Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Cancer. If Cancer is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's see what these tea leaves have to say. All right, all right. I hope you all are doing well tonight, today, whenever you're watching this, of course. Okay. Huh. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's look at, let's look at the card first. Okay. And so we have the seven of discs. Okay, so this is related to failure, but don't worry. <laughs> this card is more about um, the fear of failure. Uh, maybe a lingering anxiety, um, but a impulse to work harder, plan more, um, you know, really apply your time and energy, put that effort in. This is not, this is, the, the failure has not come yet, but there, it could, right? Um, also patience and waiting. Uh, I, when I see this card, I think a lot of, um, growth being halted. Okay. You've been doing well, you're moving forward. Things are, um, coming together. Uh, you know, whatever you're working on it is, um, building and flourishing. And then you get to a point where you start to hit kind of a plateau or maybe it goes down a bit. Okay. Um, and you're not succeeding as much, but you have still succeeded. Um, so there, there's a halt in growth maybe. Okay. So we're going to really pull on that ability to be patient, to not overthink it too much. Um, you're a cancer, so you have that tendency to tinker with what is working, but the nature of things is that it ebbs and flows, right? So, um, this is, this is kind of gets into a tricky, tricky place. Okay. So let's take a look at what, what we have going on here and we're going to figure out what exactly all of this means. Okay. So this is interesting. We have, um, it looks like, it looks like to me some kind of, um, like swan or, um, probably a swan, right? With a hooked neck. And then on the other side, it looks like we have a mirrored swan. So it kind of looks kind of like this, um, kind of dualistic ones on the upside, ones on the downside. Um, and I feel like there's kind of this need to recognize balance, uh, the natural progression of things instead of trying to force, um, something to occur that is not supposed to yet. Um, but also to, I think it's important to continue to cultivate, uh, the, the, channels and pathways to allow the creative energies or, um, you know, the, the, the energies that must flow through for any kind of, of growth evolution, um, in material things and psychic things, spiritual things, all of these different levels of matter, um, and affair. Uh, 
you have to we have to continually be cleaning out the blockages right tending the fires um, opening the windows to let the fresh air come in keeping that chi um, moving and processing in and out and so I think that you know this is really more a period of upkeep right working on the systems um, more than trying to uh, produce new content or, um, you know, create, beginning other creative endeavors or, you know, really shifting things greatly, um, pivoting, you know, into a whole other, um, direction. Uh, you know, I don't, and I don't know how long it's going to last and I know it's hard. It's hard to wait and, you know, we all have even, you know, with me doing this channel, for instance, um, you know, I, I see things fluctuate here and there and you want to just tinker with it. And sometimes you just have to kind of let it um, do its thing. Right. And I feel like you're kind of in this place a little bit and it's putting you on edge, maybe. Um, and, I, and I believe that because I'm looking at. Um, this one looks like a, this one looks like a person and then over here below a moon, although it's not a full moon, but it is, it is a moon, um, shaped, uh, little for uh, leaf here formation. Um, and then we have this figure that kind of looks like a dog, right? And then kind of going down and then we have this one that looks like it's kind of walking it looks like a dog as well and almost this kind of energy of like the werewolf right um, shapeshifter kind of changing form to the night side um, and I feel like this is really uh, this comes out comes out with cancers when they are not feeling in control you you all get very testy I believe <laughs> from my experience um, there's a lot of sharpness that uh, that a cancer carries with them and um, you may have quite a bit of patience pretty pretty good at controlling uh, your emotions most of the time, maybe even, um, not feeling, you know, so moved to, uh, reveal your emotions most of the time. Um, but when you hit that point where you are frustrated, annoyed, can't figure out what to do to make this thing work for you. And any little thing goes, you know, against, you know, per you perceive to be going against you or at you or whatever. Um, that werewolf comes out. I mean, snapping, right? Um, that anger can be very big. And um, I think that's something to be very conscious of. Uh, when you feel yourself ramping up, I feel like, you know, most of the time it's good you are the kind of people that need to disengage, go off on your own, um, you know, kind of breathe it out, take some time. Um, of course, you know, I think oftentimes with cancer, we, we kind of experience them as, uh, and I say we as it, outsiders to cancers but I have a lot of cancers in my life so I have over my lifetime so um it's kind of you I feel like we we experience you all as being pretty stoic right and tough able to intellectualize your way through a lot of things um process your emotions quietly privately um you know, away from, from people watching you. And, um, you know, I think that that's true to a large extent. I also think that a lot of cancer people, especially solar cancers, um, are tormented 
honestly, um, sometimes by their emotions and um, their inability to uh, express them as easily as maybe some other people can. And I think it gets carried around and sometimes it just becomes so volatile. And I think that also sometimes these emotions can transform you into being almost kind of pes very pessimistic, nihilistic, destructive. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of depression too. I'm not saying this is all cancers, but you know, these are, these are traits that, um, do often get attributed to, um, cancers that have, you know, have primary placements. So, um, you know, of course these are all things that are, um, hopefully manageable, right? There are all kinds of outlets. Um, things to support you. But I think the biggest thing is that you don't ignore the signs that this is getting to get bigger and bigger. And, you know, you're feeling more and more um, emotionally chaotic, volatile, um, ready to just kind of go off, right? So, um, employing whatever... <laughs> whatever kind of um, plan you have for these kinds of situations, these different kinds of circumstances. And I think, you know, I talk a lot about like stimming, um, changing uh, things like your temperature, um, when you're feeling angry, emotional, um, going and taking a cooler shower, bringing your body temperature down, um, going outside, you know, having a walk, getting some fresh air, again, disengaging, um, try, I would say not just going and hiding somewhere, you know, um, in a dark room or something, um, just kind of, uh, like ruminating, right? Uh, but doing your breathing, uh, meditating, uh, you know, I mean, there's so, so many different things that, uh, the primal screaming, um, control, controlled outbursts of anger. So, you know, going out, chopping firewood, doing demo, doing something. I think that a lot of times if you can do some kind of intentional movement, this is very helpful. Okay, um, and also just, just distractive things as well, just to get you out of that peak of emotion. Okay, now I also want to look at this one with the standing, the standing uh, dog person, right? And then next to it we have um, it almost looks like a, some, um, maybe a queen figure or a king figure. We have a large robe. We have the head with the crown and right next to that, that dog. So I feel like there's something in your life that is really, I mean, besides whatever this, uh, anxiety of failure, whatever kind of project, creative thing, um, you know, uh, issue at work or resources or whatever, whatever that is. But then I think that there's also something that's just really, um, it's a, it's a, like a large thing that is ruling your life that maybe seems like has not, it seems linked to some of this emotional stuff. Thing, something that has not really been, um, what's the word? Confronted, maybe not confronted, maybe just even, um, looked at in a, in a serious way, some kind of, um, you know, I mean, what comes to mind sometimes when I see these is something like addiction, um, uh, mental health. Um, but it doesn't have to be that it could be something like debt or, 
um, you know, just you are unhappy in your life and you don't know how to change that. You know, it's just, it's unfulfilling in some way. Um, maybe you are in a job that really just doesn't make you happy or, um, a relationship that, um, maybe you've been in it for a long time and you just don't know how to, uh, you know, change things or, um, you've already kind of given up and you don't know how to like, you know, leave or whatever. I mean, it could be anything, but I think it's large and it feels like it's growing, but it's also in the shape here where it looks like, um, you know, a volcano. And I think that all of this kind of goes together. So I think that when you have, um, more minor anxieties, so like something not happening quick enough at work or within your project or things shifting, you know, as they do, um, this kind of more brief and superficial thing, um, really just sets you off, but it's ultimately something much deeper, something much larger in your life. Um, kind of this thing that you are living, um, with that you just don't, you can't look at it. You know, you, you can't face it and, um, you have trouble, even finding the words, the language to um, verbalize it or even, you know, contemplate it. Uh, there's always so many other things to do. Okay. So I, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do about that. I don't know. Um, besides, uh, you already know what it is. You already um, probably know what you what the beginning steps are to kind of, um, you know, to begin this work. I think that you probably, probably do all kinds of other self work. You're probably also very creative. You probably, um, are really good at, at creating things, doing things, making things happen, but whatever it is about this certain thing, um, you know, it's, it's something that you will have to face or it's going to force you to face it. And, um, so I think it's always best to get ahead of these things if you can. Um, and if you have, you know, the privilege of things like therapy, counseling, um, utilizing like, uh, support groups or, and I know again, cancer, the, I don't know that you, you all are really into like, uh, more, um, you know, social or, um, uh, grouping like group settings or whatever. So maybe not that, but you can do these things online and you can do them more passively. There are a lot of forums and things to, to look through, read, um, you know, and, um, hopefully work towards this thing. So this thing doesn't sour you, um, you know, doesn't turn you into somebody who is so angry and bitter about things. Um, because once you get into that place where there is like a, a set kind of hate and rage about something, it is hard to get yourself out of that mode of thinking. Um, it really is. And that could be about anything in your life. It doesn't have to be anything super important, but you know, um, just the way, uh, you know, things play out around you. Some, you know, something might just bring you like complete, complete rage and it's like totally irrational. And, um, and so, I think it's important to try to, you know, um, yeah, work on that stuff when it, when you become aware of it for sure. And I'm just going to say, you know, this is not a unique thing to, uh, cancer or any kind of person. We all, all of us have these problems. I am such a vigilant, like irritable, like, <laughs> <laughs> hyper focused person that like if I get fixated on something that um oh my gosh just like the stupidest stuff um you know 
it just drives me nuts. So I uh, have to, you know, really temper myself, be very um, aware that uh, I'm starting to like, get really upset about something that is probably out of my control, probably has very little to do with my life in a serious way. And, um, you know, my poor husband, I have to talk to him about these things constantly to like help me like get in check about them. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's just, uh, we all struggle in our own ways. Right. And so I think it's just, you know, a matter of being honest with ourselves about it and being proactive about, um, you know, trying to work through some of those feelings and, you know, um, and not let it really set into, um, into our emotional wellness, right? Okay, so I also see we have... A person kind of, it looks like they're swimming through the air and kind of touching this flower. And um, it looks like we have another, it looks like another little uh, maybe flower here with kind of uh, beautifully bloomed. And... Uh, I also see up here a person with their arms kind of up and I feel like as we turn this, turn this bowl a little bit, it seems like we get into a period of uh, a little more dreaminess. I feel like you have decided to kind of let some of your stress go, you know, be a little more patient with things. Um, I think that you so much have the ability to kind of multiply your, yourselves, right? And um, kind of activate different aspects of your personality. And I think that, um, you know, with especially with like water signs, just flowing between those kind of prominent um, settings of self, uh, you know, if you allow yourself to do that, I think then you can really release some of that stuff, compartmentalize it a little bit. Okay. Sometimes that's all right. We just have to kind of, um, flow into a different setting, different configuration. And I feel like you, one of your, um, places you like to go are these more kind of dreamy, surreal, um, you know, just kind of a bit detached, maybe kind of dissociated from, um, some of this more trying, uh, tedium, tedium and, um, you know, allowing yourself a little bit of time to kind of just explore your mind, your interests, uh, you know, be inspired by things, maybe reading, um, consuming different kinds of media, uh, going on small trips or walks into nature, uh, maybe being alone, meditating, active visualization or active imagination and visual, 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 you know, I can't say visualizing. Um, and you know, just really kind of cutting some of the, um, those uh, tie downs you have to the material world right now because you are so focused on the things you're working on. And um, I think sometimes you can start to feel um, quite outside of yourself uh, because you are not um, giving time for those like higher parts of thinking to flourish. And that's so much part of um, the, you know, cancer, uh, alignment, I think is, you know, your one of your real strong points is just how brilliant your imagination and mind and, um, being able to immerse yourself in, um, other worlds, uh, sub dimensions and, and things like this. Um, so I think that, you know, you have so many plans 
and so many things that you want to do and and you know to some extent and i want to look at this one right here um i've had this i just had a similar formation in a different reading and it is the um the, the deer with their head turned back to look and so i feel that um you have all these things and yet you've you've paused to listen almost like a deer in a meadow or in the forest and they hear something and they stop and they look back right and it's kind of this feeling of like who is watching you you know are you are you beloved and what is this fear what is this fear that kind of follows you you know you fear annihilation and yet sometimes you would destroy everything to avoid it right um so i think it's important for you cancer definitely is you need to go into the earth you know do some grounding exercises um you know get dirty Go to a place where you can find the sun. Allow yourself to be seen by it. And to be still, right? And just, you know, take it in, take it in, take it in. And um, I think that's really, you know, the biggest, this is going to be the biggest thing for you right now. Okay, let's see, before this cat gets to the saucer here. And so we have, it almost, it looks like the upper torso of somebody with their hair kind of being blown up. And oh, I feel like when I see this, it makes me think of there's, you know, that, that uh, change of wind, okay? It's, and it's going to blow through. Um, and because you know, I live in an area where there's open spaces um, in different parts of it. Uh, and the wind, you go out into it sometimes and it's so strong and it blows right through you. It blows all of the energy, all of that stagnant stuff out of you. And I feel like this is, this is what is going to be occurring, right? It's all going to shift out of you. This thing is so momentary. This this fear of failure. Because you know what you're doing. You know, but you you question yourself all the time. And so, um, you know, just allowing yourself to even be brave and go stand out in the elements. <laughs> so that you can be cleansed. You know, not hiding away. Stop hiding away from yourself. Stop hiding away from the universe. Um, you can't. You can't. So, this is your reading for the night. And I thank you so, 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 so much. I appreciate your time. And I'm always so honored to bring these messages to you. If you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And I say us because we as a community here at the channel, and that includes each and every one of you, um, are really growing this thing, making it into something. And, um, you know, I really appreciate you. I really do. Um, if you have not subscribed, think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. I will let you know when the next video comes out. If you want to leave a comment, I read every single one of them. I try to get back as soon as I can, you know, answer each one. They all mean so much to me. And, um, you know, you could also share the video. Uh, I know that's something I'm supposed to be <laughs> mentioning and I never do. I always forget. Um, but... You know, that also, I guess, helps with the engagement. So, um, yeah, we will talk again really soon, Cancer. Thank you, thank you, thank you.